Hey, fucker, get over here. I have a segment I want to pitch to you guys about AEW. Ugh, you two. Enough with the fucking AEW already. I'm over it. When did you become such a fucking hater? Who's hating? We do a wrestling podcast. When these motherfuckers start wrestling, then I'll talk about it. Until then, you, Mike, and everybody else can go fuck yourselves. Listen, somebody get Khan on the phone. I'm an elite broadcaster. Maybe he'll offer me a real gig while I'll actually get paid. Oh, mom. Guys, WWE stepping up its game. What do you say? The past uh, two weeks, this week, do you think this? Now that we're we're out of the the new year, we're out of Christmas episodes and taped or whatever, uh, do, do you think WWE is actually stepping up their game with what the fans want? Uh, I don't know. It's starting to change a little bit. Would you say, Mike? You're gonna be okay talking about this? I mean, I know you're very pro. You know, AEW, but there, there's a lot of good <laughs> programming that actually happened this week. I just hope you're able to talk about it because I know you were so busy watching the AEW show. I felt like you had that planned for all day. I really didn't. That was literally. <laughs> I felt like you had that right planned now. all day. Yeah, I can handle it because, yes, I do enjoy WWE. Okay. And the first hour of Raw really bugged me, it was terrible. I, I I think I might be one of the few that are is just completely over Braun Strowman. Like I just I can't take him anymore. It just doesn't do anything for me, and he's starting to come off as a Roman Reigns like to me. Um, but other than that, like programming has been absolutely amazing past couple days. I mean, Raw ended up ended great, which we'll get into that, and then SmackDown delivered as well. Well, what about uh, this guy I see that's debuting soon? I, th- I think it might be three guys. Glass, is he debuting this week? Because I saw a fucking commercial, every fucking commercial break. <laughs> even uh, even red commercials, pre- you know, com- the script reads on the show. I've Holy never shit. heard live <laughs> reads on Raw, dude. What For was up with that? Oh, my goodness. Like, every... Uh, it's like, we get it. Glass is coming out. We it, was like two, it was literally like two to three times almost every fucking second. Dude. The, one of the best things... Uh, from Raw was when they had that segment with Alexa Bliss, which we'll get into. And then they go from that segment with Alexa right into the commentators. And you have Renee Young that has to do this read for the movie Glass. And Cole and Graves have the most awkward looks on their face. Go back and watch this because I could not stop laughing at freaking... Graves and the look on his face going from the Alexa Bliss topless angle to promoting glass. You mean, no, you mean Mandy Rose. No, I'm talking about on Raw with Alexa. Oh, that's right, when she was backstage in the, in the shower. Yes, okay. But not when she was in the shower, but when the guy walked in with her coffee, yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, 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 okay. Guys, answer me this then. Are they that desperate for ratings that were. We're getting back into, like, an Attitude Era-esque. I'm not saying it's full-blown Attitude Era, but come on. When's the last time they walked in on somebody in their topless? Who cares? I love Why it. are you complaining about titties, bro? you got to be the only person. Oh, the women's revolution. Oh, they're such great athletes. Yeah, we know. Like, you've heard nothing but praise out of, uh, out of me in, in terms of their athletic ability you know, the, the the training, the hard work they put in. Hey, but you know what? Some of these girls are sexy-ass bitches. And let me tell you something. You know, my girl will occasionally watch Raw or SmackDown, and she'll see some of these dudes and be like, oh, wow, that's a hot guy. And don't act like it hasn't happened to you, Credo. I, I, I know I know you, your wife has certain feelings about certain guys on the roster. I'm not going to blow up her spot on who. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Like, who gives a shit? Part of the... Part of being on television is eye candy. I don't care. It was odd. That's all I'm saying. It was it was I, just odd for their whole women's revolution kind of thing. I have to say, God bless Uso number one or number two, whichever one was. Is it Jimmy or Jay? It doesn't it's matter, actually. It doesn't matter. Bastard. God bless him. Because a couple of weeks ago, he was offered a threesome. Remember that shit? 
when Good they when you were walking through the hallway and you had Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville holding hands under a mistletoe. God Yo, bless is that it, man. Is Sonya is, Deville, uh, you know. I'm sure she will, you know, to get in there with Mandy Rose, she'll she'll take a dick. And that, but <laughs> God bless that man. Because if that was offered to me, I would have I, I couldn't control myself. I'd be like, let's go. I'm taking the mistletoe with me. We're gonna use this thing all night. <laughs> by the way, this uh, segment is brought to you by Mike Colon's terrible WrestleMania tickets. Tweet us at another wrestling pod. Hashtag behind the stage. Actually, this this segment should be brought to you by Blue Chew. Um, <laughs> it should be, but it's not because. Oh my God, Mandy Rose. Yes. I mean, granted, it wasn't no thong, no attitude era types outfit she had on, but it was beautiful. She was. I mean, she was scantily clad. That segment was terrible for many reasons. I could go on about that, but regardless of how terrible that segment was and the build up to the segment, I could watch Mandy Rose in that outfit all damn day. I- I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I know how that segment bad it was going to be. So as I was watching it, I carefully muted the TV to not hear how bad it was, just so I could enjoy the visual of, uh, you know, right, can I, hose. Let me get the hose out on you guys for a second. One Wait thing. a minute. This okay. is supposed to be Hold me on. and my segment. Before, 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 before you get a hose out, can I just say something of how terribly booked that segment was? I mean – First of all, you have the ca- – I think these people forget the fucking cameras are rolling and they're being recorded and they're filmed. <laughs> and everybody could see it, okay? You First, Jay gets the, the card from Mandy and all that stuff. And then next thing you know, Mandy and Sonya are plotting their little plan on camera where everybody could fucking see it. I know. And then next thing you know, it, it just like – they tell me that this – but Dispen- what is that? Dispense my dis my belief. I tried with this segment. Thank God for Mandy in that lingerie that mm. rescued me from going insane. Because that that was just I mean, I couldn't believe I couldn't buy into it. We'll get into the word buy into later. I'm sure everybody knows where we're going at with that. But I couldn't buy into the segment. And then Mandy Rose comes out, takes that nice little robe off, and I went to go clean my room. I'm just going to say, if any of our female listeners would like to, uh, who actually might know where she may have gotten said laundry, I would like to know just so I could, you know, maybe buy a set myself and see if I could have it autographed later You know, on. she's from Yorktown Heights. I know. I know. Let's all go right. knock on every fucking door in Yorktown. To all, all right. All right. Let me, let me get the hose, guys. I get it. They're hot. We get it. But how about, what do you... How f- dare you call them hoes? <laughs> how do you feel about... This coming out of nowhere, though, because it's like they push the women uh, to above and beyond, right? But now it's like, oh, we're slumping in the ratings. Now is Vince calling for to be more scandalous? I'm just not complaining. I'm just saying it seems funny that ratings go down, tops go off kind of a thing, no? Oh, God. See, that's, see, that's the problem I have with, with, with this argument with people like you. They kept it pretty classy. There, there was some suggested themes, but there really was no nudity or anything like that. So, like, honestly, it's, oh, the ratings are low, so now they're, they're, they're getting raunchier. Get the fuck out of here. It, 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 was a, it was a bad segment, but it was done tastefully. Let's Man. be honest. I mean, come on. What the fuck? Why do we get, oh, my God, we're pointing out the obvious. Did you see any nipple? Was there a nip slip? Was it was it like when Sensational Sherry was was wrestling Luna Vachon from the crowd and there was a a giant titty slip out? No, <laughs> who cares? What are we yeah. arguing over this for? You know, you know what I think they did it for. And someone brought this up to me and it made a perfect sense. Remember the Eva Marie wardrobe malfunction? Yes. And remember, I don't know if you guys remember, but. That clip on YouTube had the most hits WB had <laughs> in months. I, even the Alexa Bliss thing, yeah. If you look at and it, it's almost saying the same thing about Alexa's thing. I think they did that just to get the views on YouTube, to bring people to their <laughs> YouTube page. Yeah, because you get that ad revenue, man. That shit adds up, too. Uh, I will say, I know we said it before, but, you know, TNA Impact, when they used to do their backstage segments on Spike TV, or where it was like, 
it's like the cameras on the wall and it's not obvious someone's in the room. That's what I, I kind of wish they would go in that route because it is kind of ridiculous when they like walk in and the, the camera guy is just literally standing there already. And I, I wish they would do it more like movie like, but I guess they don't have that much time. Yeah. Spe- speaking of cameras, this is a little off topic, but you know what bothers me too when they got the camera guy? When the camera zooms in on them when they're watching TV and they're like, facing the, the the tv is basically behind them but they're they're facing the the camera which is in front of them and turned around watching the tv who the fuck watches tv that way <laughs> i know exactly what you're talking about um mm. well how about this mike because uh you know finn balor uh, it seemed to to be on top again. I mean, uh, he rose over Strowman. Strowman's out of the picture. Who knows if he's still hurt or, or what's going on with this whole thing. But uh, does does Finn have a chance to win the Universal Championship back at the Royal Rumble? Uh, he he beat he did the four man gauntlet. He beat Jinder Mahal on Raw all in one night. Uh, is this positive? Could we actually see a, a new champion for Raw soon? Yes, yes. Fucking Finn Balor, baby. I've been waiting for this. Granted, people are complaining. I don't give a damn. We want it change. We're getting something different. I, I, you know, this might be a place where, like, it's just like a one-and-done match just for them to kill time to get the Mania. But we're getting Finn Balor in that main event picture where we wanted him. And... I'm happy with the decision. I really am. I, I just, I couldn't take it having to watch another Braun versus Brock match. I, I really couldn't. It just, I, I don't, that was my bathroom break. Yeah, and especially how fast he lost at the the Saudi Arabia show too. Like, Strowman had like no offense and the, the match was pretty much done. Uh, but how about this, Mike? So, the, are they going to listen to the fans? Does, does Finn walk out of the Rumble as the champion? Because... Brock doesn't need it going into the Rumble, uh, into Mania again. Brock can have a match at Mania and still be a highlight of Mania. He doesn't need fucking gold around him, right? Can, well, can... well, here's the, here's the thing, and I don't know how accurate this is, but I've been hearing a lot about this on the fabulous interwebs that Brock might not even be at Mania. Hmm. His his contract, I think, ends in the end of March, early April, but I think he's just going to finally start getting ready for a fight in the UFC. So uh, allegedly, allegedly he's not going to be there. So, I mean, there's, there's so many ways that you can book this match to where it's believable. I mean, you guys watch Daniel Bryan versus Brock. We all believed that Daniel Bryan had a chance to win that match. And if he won that match, I would have bought into it. And Finn Balor is just as good as Daniel Bryan, and that guy can go in there and put on a show. And when he comes in as the demon, I mean, that's that's a little advantage for that character. I, I really do think he has a chance. Now, do they book it that way? I don't think so. I think they're going to give it to Lesnar. But no matter what, win or lose, I think Finn Balor is a made man here, and I think he's going to get over regardless of the result of that match. Sure. And now, okay, well, where does Strowman stand? Because uh, he lost a lot of steam over the past few months, especially being out injured after losing to Brock already in the, the whatever it was, the Saudi Arabia show. Uh, does he win the Rumble? Does uh, does that put him back on the top kind of a thing? Because, I mean, what do, you, what do you put him in for the Rumble? I mean, you got to put him in the Rumble match to where – I don't know how you get him out of there, especially when he fucking flips limos and dump trucks and whatever else. I mean, is is, is this just lining up uh, Braun to win the, win the Rumble? Do we actually get a Brock versus Braun Strowman match at Mania? Hey, or, or would we get like a Finn Balor versus Strowman if match? He's, if he's not medically cleared for the Rumble, he's not medically cleared for the Rumble. <laughs> like he, they pulled him out of the match because apparently he's not medically cleared. He's not going to be ready in time for the Rumble. So... I don't think the doctors are going to risk him by putting him into the Royal Rumble match. Can, can I just jump in and, and say I, I called it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like I, I really felt uh, when we were discussing this maybe a week or two ago, when we, we were saying, do we think we're going to see Braun Strowman as a champion? And I did say no. And I did say no thinking I, I don't think they have the faith in him, regardless of the fact of the injury. I don't see them. Having him do a job like that so quick to Brock Lesnar, and just for what? For him to have a com- more competitive match at the Rumble? 
I, I think Braun Strowman falls in the Andre the Giant category, if if you may. You know, um, you don't really – he doesn't need the belt. Yeah. You know, he's fun to watch without a title around his waist. And if you do put the title on him, how do you get it off of him? Yeah. <laughs> how is it believable that you beat somebody – who's flipping over limos and, and breaking out of garbage trucks and shit. So, oh, I mean, it is what it is. You, you, you have uh, Brock Lesnar hit him with five uh, F5s, and apparently that's how you beat him. Well, I what are you going to do when Brock Lesnar is not there anymore? You see, well, that, I, mean, I guess you better learn how to fucking pick him up and do an F5. <laughs> that I guess that's the only move that could beat him. Oh, man. You could put this guy in a fucking garbage compactor and crush him. And he's going to come out like nothing. <laughs> well, uh, this segment is uh, brought to you by Mike Colon's crappy WrestleMania tickets. Uh, tweet at us at uh, another wrestling pod hashtag behind the stage. That's true. It's at a wrestling pod, but still, uh, we're going to have a lot of reads like this, I guess, right? Is, is Glass debuting soon? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cooter, let me tell you this. You know, uh, the, the change is happening. You know, a lot of good matches are coming back. How about uh, Andrade versus Mysterio on SmackDown, which is probably Yo, the talk of the town? I can't you and Colon say this poor motherfucker's name right. No, they I can Andrade say it right. I can for you so you can get it right, and you're still fucking it up. I, I got his first name right all the time. I just never got his last name right for a while. I've been good Lamas, at it. Lamas? When I finally got it's good at it. You're Hispanic, and you used to say the shit wrong. My God. That was like a year ago. <laughs> when I finally got his last name correct and I was on a roll with it, they take it away. Yo, what is up with Vince and the one name thing? I don't know. Credo? I don't know. It's, you know, they're, he, he gives them like three names and then he gets sick of it or something. And then he's like, ah, just fuck it. Call him Andrade or whatever. Andrade. Oh. Andre. I can't even say Cian Almas. Fuck it. It's Andrade. Whatever. It's, I don't know, man. It's like they give him all these names, copyright it, and then take it away because he just hates it. You can't keep changing people's names once you start getting everybody used to the damn fucking name already. Uh, but you know, this match though was that was that was a WrestleMania match. That was a Royal Rumble match. That was like that. These are the kind of matches they need at least uh, one good strong match on each show every week. Just to walk away with like, wow, they put on a hell of a show. Not every match needs to be this crazy or whatnot, but one match on SmackDown, one match on Raw, the main event or whatever just has to be this good. I mean, this is kind of, you know, it's good to see Mysterio put over him, put him over uh, just to build him even more, you know, build him up more. I mean, the, the legacy of Rey Mysterio going against him, even though he won as a heel. But I mean, come on, this was uh, this was wrestling at its finest, I think, on SmackDown. Dude, from day one, I've been raving about Andrade because every match he has nearly steals the show or actually does steal the show. Even when he's on SmackDown and, and he's doing a job, he gets his shit in and he looks good doing it. Even when he's putting somebody over, he does it. And he makes himself look good, and he makes his opponents look even better. Some of his best work with guys like Johnny Gargano in, in the NXT title matches that they've had were just fucking amazing. There is just dream matches that I want to see with this dude. I would love to see a Kenny Omega-Andrade match. I really would. He's easily become one of my favorite watches on SmackDown even when he was in NXT, I was raving about him. It's, it just gets better every week. No, for sure. And I, I think he's a good category for Money in the Bank winner this year, too. Uh, somebody that could hold on to it for a while mm. and build him up even more. Uh, and just so you guys know, um, he is one of the favorites to win the Rumble. You think? Hmm. No, well, I not that I think. They put out something on the fabulous interwebs, multiple multiple dirt sheets. You know, you can never really believe everything on dirt sheets, but when you do read those stuff, you start to think. Now, he's one the the four guys that they thought are favorites to win the rumble. One, Seth Rollins. Uh, two was Finn Balor, but he's going to be out of that equation now. Not necessarily. Um, I don't think he, if he's going to be wrestling Brock, I don't see him in the Rumble. Mm. Um, and then Andrade Cien Almas was the other guy on there. There was a fourth guy, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head. 
He, but oh no, I'm sorry. Drew McIntyre was the other yep. guy. Those four guys. Now, when I saw that, I, I, you know, I'm like, all right, I could believe this. But when I saw that, then I started watching. They are, ever since I saw that, they have been pushing Andrade Cien Amis. He got two wins over Rey Mysterio, and he's been booked to be like this uh, some fucking machine in the ring. So if he wins the Rumble, I mean, fans like myself and you, and we'll b- buy into it. We'll believe it. But oh, yeah. don't get me started on the, on the crybabies. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask a question quick off, off topic. When, when it comes to Mysterio, I mean, it's great to see him putting over the younger talent. I think it works with somebody like Andrade because of the, the Lucha Libre style match that, that they did. It was absolutely incredible. Do you think it's time for somebody like Mysterio to go to 205 Live? I mean, I just don't want to see him against some of these bigger guys. I don't need to see him against the... Maybe the only people that I'd want to see him would be a Daniel Bryan and an AJ Styles. But I think, yeah. at least from my vantage point, I would like to see him maybe add some stock to that 205 division. I don't know. Maybe it's just It could me. work, but I think he, his job right now and his role... Is perfect. He's out there putting on great matches and putting over guys that need to be put over. Yeah, and I think I think that's his role. I mean, we're not going to see him in another title run. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, we're going to see him probably, you know, in a title picture, but I don't see him in a title run. His job is just simply to put guys over. No, yeah, and for for both of them, you know, uh, Andrade, I feel like would be a great Final Four guy in the Rumble. Uh, put him onto the elimination chamber. Have him in one of the in, 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 in one of the guys in the chamber or whatnot. Uh, you know, have a great match at Mania, and then I, I think still go on to win, be like a Money in the Bank winner to where build them up, keep them built up throughout the year. I don't think we're gonna get a, a total win out of him out of the Rumble right away because I still think that he has some room to grow, but just to, to get over more with the fans. But even Mysterio. You know, I'm almost wondering if they're going to get rid of 205 Live this year, the way they keep moving it around. It's back on Tuesdays. Uh, and, you know, it's like you don't need 205 Live because if you have cruiserweight matches on Raw and SmackDown, you don't really need their own show. But at the same time, you know, I would love to see him, you know, go against like a Buddy Murphy or, or, or whatnot. Just to, he is a cruiserweight. Rey Mysterio is a fucking cruiserweight. And, you know, when he won the World Heavyweight Championship, that was even a surprise. So... Uh, I don't want to see him in like a title picture for the WWE Championship or anything like that, but I think he's good what he's doing right now. But at the end when of the day, when you talk that... like that, Credo, it makes me want to punch a baby. Why? I think they're gonna cancel 205 Live. What the fuck are you talking about? They're, they're gonna they're gonna run out of it. Oh, they don't want to do it anymore. You you've lost your fucking mind. They moved the day because of the mixed match challenge. And it, it, it spread the programming out throughout the week. It's back on Tuesdays. They had a, a fucking incredible episode. You had Lindsay Dorado against the the mouthpiece for Bobby Lashley. That that, that dude is just so much. Well, oh, I know what you're talking about, but I'm just saying he's just so much fucking fun to watch. Look, I, I missed last night's episode. Are they? Doing it live again after yes. SmackDown? It's, it's so it live, live again, and that's what they said. It's live again, back on See, SmackDown. That bothers me because of the crowd. I the think they, do, they the, the crowd seemed to be a little bit into it this week. I, I, it, it's it's going to take time to build that brand. It doesn't have the, the that NXT feel. You know, it doesn't have that NXT fan base behind it. I still think that it should be a tape show coming from full sale but you i know. agree drop the live i'm sick of live yeah. smackdown live I, 205 I live. Mean, live, I, live i think the fans down in full sale or like you know you, i mean pretty much triple h has his his hands on that brand which is great so i i think the best thing to do is to bring it down to full sale and have a separate tapings for I that forget the guy's name who they because had last night the fans down there would appreciate it so much more. I'm going to tell you, they had that main event last night. Buddy Murphy did one of his open match challenges. He's great. And the kid that they had in the ring with him wasn't too bad. It was an NXT dude. I forget his name, but he's he's related to Hector Garza. I don't know if he's his kid or if he's his nephew or some shit like that. I forget what they said. I know you're talking about um, because the reason why I bring that up is because he was 
So, I guess for either I think it's Royal Rumble access or wrestle yeah royal rumble access they're doing like a 15-man tournament okay and they're taking five guys from nxt five guys from uk nxt Mm. and five guys from 205 live and what they're doing is they're first starting off with the 15-man battle royal the winner gets a buy into the second round they're they're gonna seed everybody and then everybody is pretty much gonna wrestle in that tournament and then I think the winner of that tournament gets a title shot for whatever brand wins. So and that guy that you're talking about originally was announced for, to be one of the representatives from 205 Live. And right. they scratched it because they didn't record it yet. Because he technically is, was still on the NXT roster. Because he was on the NXT roster. He wrestled – I believe he wrestled uh, – Donovan Dijak. Yes. One of his matches. And he, he was originally on the NXT roster, but they're moving him to 205 Live. They leaked his name out there. Not like it was a big deal, but they removed it. So, I mean, when I saw that, and now I know who you're talking about. I forget but his that name. Tournament, that tournament, when I saw it, that tournament looks ridiculous. Five guys from NXT. Adam Cole is one of the guys in the tournament. Oh. Um, the UK guys, I don't know who's representing the UK. Um, I know Cedric Alexander is one of the guys in the, the tournament. Uh, TJ Perkins is another guy in the tournament representing 205 Live. I haven't seen him on 205 Live in weeks. I have to I have to look this up. Well, speaking of UK, though, while you're doing that, uh, I'm not shitting on it. I don't hate it. I, I, I haven't seen it. They had their own takeover this weekend. They announced their performance center in the UK. NXT's taken over the world little by little, so the UK is the the number one stop right now. But I, I don't know what it is. It's just not drawing me into it yet. I'm not saying the wrestling's bad. It has nothing to do with the wrestling. It's just I I, I guess I can't, I can't keep up with all the programming is what it is. I mean I'm a Raw guy. I love watching Raw live every week. Raw I'm there live no matter what unless it's some kind of emergency. SmackDown I'll tape it and watch it when I can. NXT when I can. But everything else, I'm like, I, I can't keep up. And now with uh, the whole UK guys, did you watch it? How was it? Uh, and what maybe draws you into it? What guys? Because there's no character on it that says, like, oh, he's on. I got to watch it. I, I just – I haven't followed it. So I, I don't know. Oh, I don't there know is now. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that I, I watched a, a, a select few of the matches. I didn't watch the whole card. But, but I wanted to watch uh, the matches that were promoted. And the the finals of the tag team tournament for the titles were well it, that was fucking incredible. Dude, I watched it live. Oh man, I, I wish I did. But I, I, dude, is it me or does Zach Gibson does he have Tommaso Ciampa heat or what? In the UK, hey, yeah. That oh means. my god, dude, they hate that man. I'll tell you right now. If you haven't watched that UK event, go and watch it. You don't really have to be a huge fan because the wrestling does everything for you. Yeah. There's only one match that you know didn't really do anything for me, but other than that, every single match to me delivered. The what Finn match? Balor surprise, it was I didn't I didn't expect Finn Balor to come out. I thought that was going to be Walter's debut to come out, but Walter came out towards the end. And for those people who don't know who Walter is, oh. You need to go on the Google machine and, <laughs> and you need to type in Walter and you need to watch this guy. I sent the video, of the, the cooter earlier of Walter's chops and I, he chopped Zack Saber jr. And I think he died. <laughs> I, I think he died. Walter is a bad motherfucker and the UK brand has Walter. And when he, and I was expecting him to come out. But then when he came out at the very, very end, that crowd went nuts. They, yes. they sang his theme song. And then it's just you have this streak with, with Pete Dunne. And now you got a guy like Walter who's standing in front of him. And now it's a challenge for the streak. So now you have a good, compelling story for this brand. And it's only getting better. It really is. Regardless of the fact that Mustache Mountain lost that tag match, though. I, I'm they, they, they got to be a top three team in the world. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. I think they're a better team than the Revival. 
dare I say, I think they're better than the Young Bucks. I really do. They, they can do no wrong with me. The matches that they've had this year, the, the last two years, could, could be match of the year candidates, for Christ's sake. Yeah. And, and this was one of them. Exactly. So, so I got so the tournament I was talking about. It's called the Worlds Collide Tournament. Okay. Um, it's going to be Russ, or I'm sorry, uh, Royal Rumble Access Weekend. It's going to be actually the Saturday, January 26th. Session start at 8 a.m. Wow. It's going to start with a 15 man battle royal. Um, the order of eliminations will determine the seeds in the match in the in the tournament, and then the winner will get the first round by in the tournament. Uh, tournaments will conclude or continue through Saturday's session. Um, the winner will get a title shot of the champion on their particular brand. Now, these are the participants. So NXT, they have Adam Cole, Velveteen Dream. Nice. Dominic Dijak, Keith Lee. And I think this last name is going to change. I think they're going to add someone else. Otis. <laughs> Don't get me started on this fucking guy. Otis, what, how do you pronounce Dozovic? his name? Dozovic, yes. Oz- Otis Dozovic. He's on the main He's roster, on the main now, roster. So, fucking so that's going to change probably. So 205 Live, you have Cedric Alexander, Tony Nice, Drew Gulak, TJP, and a superstar to be named, which is that guy who debuted. Okay. Um, NXT UK, you have Mark Andrews, Tyler oh. Bate, Travis Banks, Jordan Devlin, and Zach Gibson. So, oh, they're going to give that to Gibson. No way. They won't give it to him. He's got a belt. So that in that tournament, actually, they're going to be filming all that stuff. So you'll be able to watch it on the network. <clears throat> I, I'm actually looking forward to some of that, man. I'll, the I'll, Worlds Collide Tournament. I'll add it to my queue of uh, should I have any Credo, I, I, I tell you what. I tell you what. Let me challenge you. Okay. You got three hours of Raw. How about this? How about you don't watch fucking Raw next week? I can't do that. It's so good you now. <laughs> you can do it. it, it it's it's uh, it, it's like your go-to for porn. I get it. <laughs> you go you go to what you're gonna finish off the best. I get it. <laughs> don't watch Raw this week. All right. Watch an episode. Uh, last week's episode. Because didn't they just come out with an episode for for the UK? Yeah. No, not yet. Um, they're filming right now. They they're just re-airing uh, the UK so takeover. What day of the week are those? Wednesday, right after NXT. Oh, it is. But what? they, I, I was, I'm watching right now. There, it's the t- UK takeover they have right now. But you can't. You in Credo's defense, you can't have a miss Raw this week simply because it's the go home show before the Rumble, and. You know, er- oh, those I'll, are I'll, always the worst. But I'll, I'll have, dedicate but extra time. Right, it's good right now because you have Finn Balor as the number one contender. So, like, you know, fans like myself and Credo, who are, you know, big fans of Finn Balor, we're going to tune in. Now, granted, Brock Lesnar is not booked to be on the show, but Paul Heyman is. So, you're going to get great interaction between those two. <laughs> well, okay, guys, how about this then? I'll, I'll definitely Credo's dedicate some time. Credo's not going to be able to watch it. This just in. He's got another PTA meeting to go to. <laughs> I'll I'll dedicate some time. I'll uh, I'll have it <laughs> have it on doing something else. I'll I'll, I'll multitask. But uh, br- there's some news going around, and I I, I tried to make it a show without going all AEW, but, uh, you know, on the interwebs, Mike, as you say, uh, the revival seems to have asked for the release and also breaking tonight, uh, Mike Kanellis and Maria Kanellis also have asked for the release guys, uh, is there cooter, man? Is this like a trend going? Do you think this is going to start happening now that maybe more competition is building up granted? Yes. We don't have anything AEW yet, but do you think guys are going to start doing this? Because honestly, if they asked for the release now and they grant it to them, by the time they actually get released, because if they give them the full uh, POC treatment, the full Neville treatment, you know, it's going to be how many months till they actually get out of whatever is remaining in their contract. But I don't know. By the time they get out of their contract, do you think it'll, you know, they'll have a show and something? Do you think this is going to pretty much happen now that you know the guys are just going to bitch and complain and get out, get out of their contracts now that there's more competition around first things first both those rosters are flooded with too much talent it is what it is unless you're a huge name superstar you've you've gotten lost in the shuffle 
And you know what? It happens. I don't want to hear about the revival crying like a baby that, oh, you know, they're the best tag team in the world. Yeah, are you? Really? You, 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 you've had matches. You, you didn't fucking really, uh, w- whether you did a job or, or you won the goddamn thing, you really didn't do much to impress while you were on the main roster. Whose fault is that? Don't act okay. like you weren't given. You were, oh, I was given an opportunity. And, 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 and Mike Canellis, okay, you know what? I get it. You gave it a shot. You know, you, you went to rehab instead of work. I get it. All right, cool. And then fucking you, your wife had a kid and you wanted to do the right thing. I get it. Good for you. Why is that WWE's fault? I, no. I don't get it. You want to leave? Leave. But Vince isn't going to let you leave. You know that. He's going to ho- either hold you to your deal and, 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 and pay you to sit on your ass. So you can't go to the competition. Yeah. That's just what. That's just how that works. And I'm going to see a lot of this. Yeah, I wonder you how really many, are. how much time is left on him. Like, do they have a year left? Do they have like two months? Or you know, is it? Because if it's short, I get it. But if you have like a year or two, I'd rather just still sit on the side, still sit on the sidelines of Raw or whatever, and collect money instead of. I don't know. It's it's a weird situation, I guess. Because if they if they don't let you out, well, how long did Neville sit out? He sat out for like a year or so, right? Almost a year. Yeah, they they <laughs> held him. I guess it's kind of nice. You're, you're getting paid maybe still, or but at the same time, you get some uh, rest or whatever, some R&R. See, it kind of could... like – it bothers me with the Revival because regardless of what Cooter says, Cooter was on the Revival bandwagon not too long ago. Go back I'm... in the archives. Listen, anyway. go ahead. Go fuck you, Mike. Don't even say <laughs> that bullshit because I'm not saying they're a bad team. But what I'm – I've done nothing – but say how great of a team they are. However, have they impressed while they're on the main roster? They no. Same thing as a fucking any other team that has gone from NXT to the main roster. If you're not fucking doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're not getting over, how is that anybody's fault but your own? Whose fault is that? It's booking. It's how they're booking. Oh, it's booking. It's okay. They're booking. It's, it's half and half. Booking. Definitely half yeah, and half. Bullshit. I, I'm tired yeah, of the booking booking's... excuse coming from really? you. Really? What the There are guys who have been given the for? worst fucking gimmicks in the world, and they've gotten them over every single time. Really? And you know who's a classic example of what? Fucking Rusev. Rusev has been given every shitty angle, every shitty fucking spot that you can do, and he gets it over every single fucking time. So blame booking for that. The oh. booking, booking was terrible with oh Rusev for a God. while. He did it. He got himself over with exactly. that. Exactly. But when booking put him, that's in your fucking he was job, like, Mike. Fucking idiot. Well, Revival was hot coming from NXT, and they didn't really give them that much of a chance on Raw. They definitely oh, jobbed them out. Go. They jobbed them out. Them I mean, they, they didn't give them a them. mic. They, they gave them a handful of t- chances to even say something. So Forgetting it's 50 gave them a run when they debuted, and then somebody got hurt. How do you get a, how do you get a sure, fucking get chance hurt. when you're booked in the fucking B-team's barbecue Listen, segment? Don't, fucking listen. terrible. Given, you were given the opportunity. Terrible. You got to the main roster. They gave him a couple of hot matches. They gave him a bit of a push. And they and somebody got hurt. killed it. Oh, well. And they oh, killed well. it. You can't do anything about injury. You okay. can't. It happens. How did Vince it happen? needs to understand that. Okay, good. Vince needs to understand that. You can't no, do anything I'm tired about of the, injuries. I'm tired of the excuse of the booking. It had nothing to do with the booking. You were given the shot. You were given an opportunity, and somebody got hurt. And then they, they moved on. The they, they had, had to move. Definitely had to do with the booking. That, that, okay, great. It, it, it's yeah. it's, a, it's definitely it's a mix of both worlds. The fact that somebody couldn't make it to work because they were hurt. <laughs> it's definitely okay, a mix great. of both worlds, though, because yes, they are given a chance, and they didn't really do what they should have done with that chance. But at the same time, too, they yeah. are they are getting jobbed out to nobodies. And but I, I that's it's one of the is it one of those NXT experiments to where. It worked better in NXT, and then they came up, and they didn't really know what to do with them up there kind of a thing. Do they fall in that no category? no idea what to do with a lot of people up there. There's so many guys in the back that are doing nothing right now because they have no idea what to do with them. The Kevin it's Dunn ridiculous. Experience. So, like, grant, granted, this whole AWE with them, with wrestlers requesting for the release, maybe they might actually be helping the WWE out in a way because they can trim the fat, Rather than having Black Friday where they just randomly start releasing people, you have people that don't want to be there. Fine. We'll get rid of you. We'll release you from your contract. Good luck in your future endeavors. We're not going to release the people that actually want to be here. And that, I'm surprised they and got away plus, with those I mean, trunks. Those yeah, and then plus the fact 
The fact is, AEW is offering health care, which to me is a big deal. So you're going to see a lot of wrestlers that are going to gravitate towards that. Granted, the Revival asking for the release. Mike and Marie Bennett. I mean, they're not being booked anywhere. Uh, they're going over there probably. I mean, they asked for the release. I'm sure within the next couple of weeks, you're probably going to see more stories of guys asking for their release. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. They're going to go over there for what? That one payday, the Bucks and the Revival? I'm sure. And then what? And, and then who, who are they going to rival afterwards? Oh, wait, there isn't anybody there. Oh, fuck. Here we go again. You know, it, it's funny because – Right. Our, it's, it a, <laughs> it's, it's just building. Yeah, Don't we'll see. Don't be one of those negative fucking – I'm not being things. negative. I'm not being negative. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying. You could get, even go Ring of Honor, too. Ring We're of Honor is – We're not growing a garden here. <laughs> What's that? We're not growing a garden here. <laughs> Rome wasn't built overnight. Let's not. wait it out. Let's see what. Well, why they... are we talking about something that's not happening right now? That's but, that's why. You know, it could even go to Ring of so Honor too. They're going to go to AEW. They don't have a show. Where are they going to? Well, you got Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has lost a lot of people from Cody Rhodes, the Bucks, and all those guys. And then even this weekend was uh, Flip Gordon got injured and Chris Sabin got injured. Both injured their knees. Two more guys down for Ring of Honor. Uh, Mm. Ring of Honor, is, they've dropped a lot of people in like a short span of time. And granted, they haven't come out and said how, the full extent of their injuries, but I don't think it's going to be in weeks. This, those like knee injuries could be at least a few months. So they've lost a lot of people. So Ring of Honor definitely has a bigger purse right now with the the, the loss of you know all the AEW guys, but. Hopefully they pick up some more names besides, you know, uh, well, <laughs> the old uh, WWE guy. What the fuck is his name on the Villain Club or whatever he is? Oh, PCO. PCO. More, I maybe get PCO. some more younger guys now, but you know, it, it, it could be it's a not war. Human, it's it's not gonna human. if if they if they purchase some people, you know, it'd be a nice little war between all three of them, Ring of Honor, them, and still nobody's really talking too much about TNA. I guess we kind of mentioned speaking, it a little bit. Speaking of Ring of Honor, I watched. I I didn't watch their full pay-per-view or the event they had this past weekend, but I watched highlights. And we're talking about PCO. For a 51-year-old, that motherfucker is definitely not human. He's really living that fucking gimmick because the spots that he's doing, and I think he's doing this because the, the fans love the fact that he does all this stuff. Just go back and watch highlights of this match from this past weekend. This guy's he he's not gonna be able to keep this up uh, every he, night. He's always he's, said too that he has a high threshold for pain, kind of like a Mick Foley in a way that where, yeah, he's doing the shit and it, it probably doesn't hurt him as much. But I get it, and it's gonna it's gonna take a toll pretty soon because he wasn't doing that kind of shit when he was in WWE. I don't remember him even WCW doing that no. kind of stuff. So to do it at 51, man. You either got that DDP I mean, yoga going or something. I don't know what's happening with him. Definitely that not any, human. The NEW show, the NEW show at the Civic Center. Yeah. He, I forgot. Big Bacon, Brad Hollister. Brad Hollister. Yeah, Big Bacon, and that spot, not just on the ring ring apron that he took, but flying outside of the ring and just oh, this guy, fifty one years old. Holy shit, he uh, really is not human. Yeah. He really. Is. Yeah. Well, you guys, a lot of people probably are listening to the show and they hear us bitching about things, complaining, arguing. We had some heat going on there, but it's 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 fine. It's 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 constructive. But at the same time, Mike, uh, we're uh, in a group on Facebook, Pro Wrestling Marks. Uh, was it facebookcom group Pro Wrestling Marks? Anyway, uh, cheap plug. But there's a lot of people out there that just love complaining. To complain, can we talk about some of these negative fans? I know that's kind of been a, a running theme <laughs> as of late, but some of these people, man, it's like they just live to fucking argue about stupid shit. They really make wrestling fan. It's like, why they, are you even a fan? Why are you even watching if you're going to play in this? They, they make it. They make it so terrible. It's like. Granted, Cooter's upset about AEW because nothing's happening yet. I'm not okay. upset. No, 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 shut up and let me talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but. These fans are like really like shitting on it, like they want they they want it to fail. They legit legitimately said I can't even speak right now that they want the product to fail because it's not a WWE, and just the the praise that they give the WWE compared to anything else outside of WWE, it's it's kind of like it's retarded. It really is like just the shit that they say. It, I don't understand the mindset that goes through half of these fans. I really don't. Like, when you bring up other options, they completely shit on it. 
because it's not the product that they watch every Monday night. And granted, I'm a huge fan of the WWE. I, we all grew up on it. It's what got us into wrestling. But there's other options out there. But for them, they have to close out everything, and everything is the devil. If it's not a WWE product, it's the devil. And that, and there's a shit all over it. And that and it's just they can't just sit back and just enjoy wrestling. And I'm not even talking about AEW. I'm talking about people are shitting on the indies. Like it, it's just like they say they're no talent indie wrestlers. They'll never be WWE. Something like that. Some guy tried to say that the Bucks aren't over. And that's a stupid fucking statement to say. (laughs) That's a real stupid statement to say. Oh, they're not over. They're not shit. Okay. Go look at the fucking sales they had at Pro Wrestling Tees. They beat a lot of the guys on the main roster with the sales they had. Okay. They sold out an arena with 11,000 fans simply by their show on YouTube and Twitter and social media. And there's some of the only wrestlers that. License their merchandise to Hot Topic too. Like you know, that's like yeah. nobody does that's that. <laughs> and they can, just... can I say something real quick about pro wrestling tees? What they got a lot of heat with me because they take forever. Well, didn't they deny your shirt? No, not fuck that. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. I, 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 I get all that. Clothes. You know, that's fine. I actually ordered like one hundred and fifty dollars worth of shit, right? Again, because I like my pro wrestling T-shirts. Two weeks. Two weeks, not even, uh, what you call it? They, they've taken my money. They haven't printed my shirts, and I still don't have a tracking number. Now, now, Kudo, let me ask you, what shirts did you order? You don't have to t- name all of them, but just name specifics. Like the ones uh, that you were got, looking forward to I, get. Well, I got um, a bunch of the old Bullet Club patches. Okay. You know, um, and I bought another one of those uh, Bullet Club sweatshirts. Because I beat the shit out of I, I I wear them at the gym. I love it. And I want to get – I bought all those patches, the iron-on patches, because I want to throw them on there. And, you know, I'm just going to do some shit. Now, now, you're buying Bullet Club merchandise, but yet these negative fans are saying Bullet Club is never over. Oh, uh, I know. I mean, here, fucking... here's, here's the argument that I want to make when it, when it comes to this. Because I'm, I'm the guy in the bleachers laughing at all of you motherfuckers because the, 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 the pro WWE fans – and they are saying – some dumb shit, Mike. I am in 100 agreements with you. So These motherfuckers make me look like a genius half the time. <laughs> okay, I am not the brightest fucking uh, you know, light in the sky, that is for sure. But some of the shit that comes out of these people's mouths it boggles the mind. Now, on the other hand, some of the shit that you're saying, you know... We've spent more time talking about AEW than content that they've produced, and that's what bothers me. Okay, I, I, I get why I'm people not, are. Not, I let you have your say. I let. All right, have all right, okay, okay, it's fair. Okay. It's fair. We we are basing this entire conversation on maybe and potential, and I just don't want to have that kind of conversation. That's why I get annoyed. Oh, this guy's going to go to AEW. What are they going to? That's that's my point. And, and, and for, for, for people to say that I'm being a hater for that, I'm not hating on it. I want it to succeed. Just, you know, I'll talk about it when it's something to talk about. That's all I'm saying. And, and for, for, for the pro wrestling or the, the, the pro WWE marks, eat a dick. Get AIDS. Here's Have my a thing. sandwich. Here's my <laughs> thing. I understand where you're coming from with, with things where they haven't done anything yet. That I understand. But... Can we be actually excited that there's another alternative coming out for – can we actually look forward to something? And, uh, yes, absolutely. But here's the thing. Even the, like when people are excited about this, these hardcore freaking little pussies like to shit all over it of because course. they're if little WWE. Do. They're if you little ain't WWE. got no haters, you ain't popping, right, Mike? Yeah. Okay. So this so, is the point I'm trying to make, though. But hold on, let me finish. And that they shit all over it because all the attention right now is being on this. I'll, t- I'll tell you something right now, and I-, I-, I called out a lot of people on this bullshit because the same people, first of all, the same people that are bitching and complaining, 
are the same people that bitch and complain that they want to change and they wanted something new. Exactly. The same people that are complaining that Chris Jericho is old, washed up and out of shape are the same people that fucking praise Je- Chris Jericho and call him a goat. And every time he comes out, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But only when it's on fucking raw. Yeah. So it's exactly. like they can't make their mind. Their, their arguments are just stupid. I understand fans are leery. I understand fans, you know, are holding it at arm's distance. But for myself, being a fan of professional wrestling, I'm excited. Because we have another alternative. And that's and, good. And it's and you good for everybody. should be excited, Mike. You should be excited. But we spent too much time talking about it already. <laughs> well, guys, guys, how about this? Because I know in the past we were trying to put together different segments and different things for the show. One good thing we really wanted to do a long time ago was, like, mean tweets, right? Find mean tweets for people who are doing stuff. I think... We kind of got something with this to where we call out these motherfuckers, whether they're on Facebook or whatnot, and we tag them in the show so they listen to it, and uh, we'll, we'll answer what they're saying on the show. So if they say something stupid, we read it on air, and then we'll talk about it. We'll put them you know on. I mean? Put them on Mark. Put them on. Uh... Let Let me look in my my conversation. <laughs> Credo wants to put this on blast. Put oh, it on blast. Be bad for everybody. There's a fucking moron that I was talking to. Was a. Continue talking. I'm gonna find. And I, well, one. either way, I think it'll be good because I think people hide behind those keyboards, think they can say what they want to say, and that's fine. That you're you're more than welcome to. But when you say something stupid, I think that's a great time to bring it up, broadcast it to the world and all of our listeners throughout the world, and uh, kind of put them on the put them on the mark, right, Cooter? I I just I just I, I don't get it. I know. So, th- this motherfucker on Twitter, at SSG Chris, Chris with a K, you fucking idiot. Okay? <laughs> He's one of those idiots that were shitting on AEW, shitting on the Young Bucks, shitting on Cody, praising the WWE, and he also is the guy that retweets a lot of the shit that fucking Young Bucks post, that praise the Young Bucks previously. Read the tweet already. Jesus Christ. Dick. And I'm, I'm not reading. It's a lot of tweets. I'm just putting him on blast because he's one of those guys that praised Chris Jericho. And then now he's not in the WWE. And now Jericho is washed up and cannot put on a five-star match. And he's not over. And you know, he compared Roman Reigns being more over than the Young Bucks and the Elite. Uh, oh. God. End of story. <laughs> yeah. oh. wah, wah. Well, guys, well... And that being said, this segment is now also being brought to you by Uh-oh. Mike Pallone's crappy WrestleMania tickets. Tweet us at where, Credo? A Wrestling Pod. That's right. Hashtag behind the stage. Behind the stage, behind you the... can find me at WrestleMania 35. Behind the stage, I have an obstructive view. I might not see you. You might not see me. I might not even be able to see the big screen, but I have my phone. Therefore, I can tune into the WB Network and watch it while I'm at MetLife Stadium. Oh, my God. The Revival are at WrestleMania. <laughs> no, you can't see him, Mike, because you're hashtag behind the stage, bro. <laughs> I'm really going to look for new seats. I really am. I was, I was trying to find – like I, I went on uh, the Giants website, and you can get like those virtual like seating charts. And yeah. You can see. And <clears> – <throat> If I was at a Giants game, it'd be good seats because it's literally right in the middle. Yeah. But now I'm trying to look at it, and I'll, I'll tweet out the picture so you guys can see it. And it's like I'm trying to picture the stage and then seeing if I could actually see over the oh, stage. God, he has no <laughs> idea. Were you at 29? I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Let me let me put it to you this way. That <laughs> stage was so huge. Like it was literally a quarter of the, that whole set, that whole I think it was all blacked out. Yeah, it was. And Unless it, they're going to make the stage smaller so they can fit more people in there because it is a huge stadium and they will get a huge gate. I, if, if if they kind of like shorten it down a little bit because I think it was a little too big I no, think sometimes no. they do too much you guys are at 29 I think you. I, I was just going to ask you when you guys are at 29 did you see people sitting up there directly above the stage yes there were people sitting up there yes and wow. the only reason I can say that is because I was up 
I think I was in the second deck or the third deck. I don't remember. But I, I, I remember being up pretty pretty high because to me it was like, I'm in the building. I'm at WrestleMania. It was a bucket list thing. Um, I mean, I was literally watching CM Punk and Undertaker through binoculars, but that's another story. And I was with friend of the show, Jacob. So well, that was entertaining. I do want to say when Vince McMahon does another reveal, I want to put like a dot on the screen where Mike Colon's seats are. So <laughs> the the Statue of Liberty and fucking Mike's seats up in the fucking top deck for, for you for I'm gonna twenty nine ninety nine. And I'm gonna I'm gonna in my luck I'm gonna freaking get hit by Pyro. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mike, I got a great idea. <laughs> what? You know how I love your Vince McMahon impression. You know I love it, right? I want you to be Vince trying to sell you these tickets, hashtag behind the stage. Oh, I got these great tickets. I, I can't even do it right now. Because <laughs> he's so mad that he actually bought these fucking things. Yeah, I had no choice. <laughs> Ticketmaster put, they backed me in a fucking corner. That's what they did. Fuck you, Ticketmaster. Seriously, <laughs> I went on a rant about this. It really pisses me off the fact that you go on Ticketmaster to try to buy tickets for a fucking show and they put you in this virtual waiting room where you have to sit there for 40 minutes waiting for your turn to pick tickets and when you go to get your fucking tickets you select tickets oh no another buyer got them please choose again oh let me click these oh no you can't have them another buyer got them you know what's gonna be really funny about this credo is that we're gonna be sitting there watching it on TV Texting each other back and forth, bitching about how long this fucking show was like eight or nine hours, maybe 10 hours, right? And we had to sit through and watch this entire show. Mike's gonna have to sit there for like eight, nine, 10 hours and not see a fucking thing. And my fucking luck, too, it's gonna snow. <laughs> as I get as... seats behind the stage and it's gonna snow. As long as it's brought to you by Glass, coming out this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> my, my advice to everybody. Um, be careful when you buy your tickets on Ticketmaster because they will put you in a waiting room and they will segregate you into one spot. They put you in the Puerto Rican section, Mike. They put me in the, the yeah, the racist section. That's racist. <laughs>